Hello everyone, welcome to session three of LTech 623 Digital Video Design. In this video, we're going to cover four topics. First, we'll take care of a few housekeeping items. Then we'll take a look at some of the advantages of video over other media. Then we'll talk about some of the big ideas surrounding do-it-yourself media. And finally, we'll close out by reviewing what we've learned about lighting. So let's get started. This week, office hours are required. This means everyone needs to sign up using the online office hour sign up sheet. The purpose of having required office hours is for all of us to get to know each other a bit better. An asynchronous course can be pretty isolating at times, so I want to connect with all of you in real time at least for a few minutes. When you go to the sign up sheet, you'll see that I've posted 30 different time slots for this Wednesday and Thursday. The times run from 12 noon to 6 p.m. Hawaiian time. You should be able to find a time that works for you. I encourage you to sign up in groups of two or even three. This is easier on my schedule and will allow you to meet a classmate as well. There's nothing to prepare for these meetings. They'll be informal get-to-know-each-other sessions. Of course, if you have questions about the course structure or content, by all means bring them. If you absolutely can't make one of the available times, send me an email and we'll make alternative arrangements. Okay, second housekeeping matter. I want to cover a few tips on how to be successful with your critical reflections. First, please post your reflections directly into the discussion thread, as opposed to copying a link or attaching a file. The reason for this is it makes it easier for others in the class to view your work and in turn, benefit from what you've shared. Second, please cite the readings in your postings and use APA style citations. If you are still learning how to use APA style, I recommend Purdue's Online Writing Lab. They have everything you need to know, beautifully organized and laid out with lots of examples. If you're citing a class reading, you don't need to list the reference at the end of your post. For example, if you cite Zettel 2017, I know what you mean, so there's no reason to list it at the bottom of your post. Third tip, please embed your images into your posts. In Canvas, this is a two-step process. First, you have to upload the image to your personal storage in Canvas, and then second, insert or embed the uploaded image into your post. If you need help learning how to do this, please watch this short video tutorial on YouTube. Finally, I want to encourage everyone to review how critical reflection assignments are graded. The details of the five-point scale are outlined in the course syllabus. For example, here's the language describing the characteristics of a five-point critical reflection post. I just want you to keep this in mind as we move forward this semester. For our last housekeeping matter, I wanted to mention a small tool that I find super helpful. It's actually a browser extension that allows you to speed up and slow down video really easily. It's called Video Speed Controller, and it's available for Chrome and Firefox. It's a super convenient tool that gives you a lot of control over the speed of video, and since we're going to be watching so much video this semester, I thought I'd mention it to all of you, so check it out. Okay, moving on. Earlier, we talked about the known limitations of video. Today, I want to counterbalance that by talking about some of the advantages of video. So what are some of these advantages? Well, first, video can save time. Although upfront costs are high, video ultimately saves time at the point of delivery when material must be repeated. And with tight editing and careful scripting, video can deliver a lot of information in a compressed fashion. Second, video can save money compared to traditional forms of instruction. This is possible by reducing the cost of training and communications. This is pretty common sense, but if it takes less time to communicate a message through the use of video, time is saved. If it takes less time to train workers or help learners, they become more skilled or knowledgeable that much sooner. In addition, video increases efficiency because learners control the schedule of viewing. Video enables just-in-time learning. This is a tremendous benefit over pre-scheduled time-specific information delivery. Next, video reduces travel time and costs. Instructors travel less and, more importantly, the viewing audience is extended, opening up communications locally and globally. 
For example, in this class, geographically speaking, we have students spread out all over. Furthermore, video is consistent. All viewers receive the same information in the same style of delivery. This can be important, creating a reliable, constant delivery system. And finally, by combining color, motion, and sound, video is inherently interesting. We've all heard the legend of the runaway train film that sent an audience running out of the theater in the 1900s. Although there's no hard evidence that that actually happened, it speaks to film's power as a communicative medium, which is certainly one of its advantages. So there we have it, a nice list of some of the advantages video has to offer and why it might be a better choice than other information delivery forms. Now I'd like to talk about do-it-yourself media by Noble and Lankshire. What are do-it-yourself media? Do-it-yourself media are comprised of digital entertainment and expressive media produced by everyday people to meet their own goals and personal satisfactions. Examples include podcasts, music remixes, and videos. Why do people create, share, and respond to do-it-yourself media? Well, there are many reasons, mostly related to civic engagement and creative expression. For example, they might be fans of some larger phenomena, they might be affiliated with some social group, or they're interested in some particular area or hobby, or they enjoy tinkering and exploring to create media artifacts. So, how are do-it-yourself media made? Well, they're made by making use of software and hardware and insider skills, techniques and knowledge that were previously the domain of highly trained experts who had access to specialized and typically very expensive media production resources and spaces. Do-it-yourself media creators often have a good sense of the professional standards typically applied to the media they themselves are creating, even though they themselves are not necessarily professionals. Is there a name for people coming together to create do-it-yourself media? Yes. It's called participatory culture, which happens when consumers take media into their own hands and become actively involved in contributing to cultural development through creating media, sharing it, and responding to it. Where does participatory culture happen? Well, participatory culture happens in affinity spaces. And affinity spaces are loosely organized social and cultural settings that tie people together. People in these spaces teach each other things, formally and informally, and there tends to be many people in many locations who are connected by a shared interest or passion. What do people in affinity spaces actually do? Well, they help each other to learn, act, and produce, regardless of their age, place of origin, their formal credentials, or their level of expertise. So, you may be wondering, why are we talking about do-it-yourself media and participatory culture in LTech 623? Well, the answer to that has to do with our study of video within educational contexts. In this course, as learners, we're going to be mucking around, tinkering, and creating media artifacts, specifically video. In addition, we're striving to be quote-unquote insiders, learning about the tasks, tools, and knowledge of quality video production. Furthermore, we'll, we'll be joining affinity spaces dedicated to video production and teaching and learning with video. And, of course, we're learning how creating, sharing, and responding to video is impacting student learning. In closing, I want to end with a quick review of lighting. We've learned that lighting is the deliberate manipulation of light and shadows for a specific communication purpose. And that purpose is twofold, to manipulate and articulate the viewer's perception of the environment and to establish an aesthetic context for the viewing experience, a framework that tells viewers how to feel about a certain event. We've also learned about the traditional or standard three-point lighting setup, sometimes called triangle lighting, and we watched a video that very clearly demonstrated the impact of combining different light sources in different ways. Mainly, we learned about key light, the principal light source that reveals the basic shape of the object or event. We learned about fill light, which controls fall-off, 
And of course, fall off is the relationship between light and shadow and has to do with the degree of contrast between the two, as well as the rate of change between the light and shadow, which can be fast or slow. And of course, we learned about backlighting or hair lighting, which is really designed to separate the subject from the background. And finally, we reviewed lighting so carefully because soon we're going to be creating and sharing our own educational videos. So we're raising our awareness of how to control some of the basic elements needed to produce high quality video. And we'll be continuing to develop skills in particular areas related to video production in the next couple of weeks. So with that, we're out of time. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you in office hours in the days ahead. Have a great day, everyone.